Hello and welcome back to Women's Football Talk, the YouTube channel that brings you all the latest news and stories from around the world of women's football as and when it happens. So this Monday evening has saw the coronation of the 2021-22 season Ballon d'Or winner. And it has been announced that Barcelona and Spain midfielder Alexia Putellas has won the award for the second time, obviously winning it last year uh, as well with a fantastic season for Barcelona and for Spain. All competitions last season, 53 games, 41 goals, 23 assists. Absolute phenomenal season uh, for the 28 year old who's obviously currently out recovering from her ACL injury that she sustained just before uh, the Euros got underway this past summer. However, for me, there was no shred of doubt that Pateas was going to win uh, the Ballon d'Or. Such a fantastic player to watch, and everything she does is just pure brilliance. And I think it's a uh, fair and just reasoning that uh, Pateas has gone on to win this season's uh, Ballon d'Or and I think uh, the top three as well uh, Beth Mead finishing in second place again a phenomenal season for Mead with Arsenal and England contributing in so many ways to both Arsenal and then obviously helping England win the European Championships in the summer uh, thoroughly just second place for the 27 year old and then Australia and Chelsea's Sam Kerr finished in third place obviously helping Chelsea to win the WSL title for a third consecutive time and obviously winning the WSL Golden Boot as well. So um, let's have a look at the rest of the top 20. In fourth there was Lena Oberdorf of uh, Wolfsburg and Bayern Munich, uh, Bar Wolfsburg and Germany, sorry. In fifth, Aitana Bonmati. Six, Alexandra Pop. Seven, Ada Hegerberg. Eight, Wendy Renard. Nine, Katarina Macario. Ten, Lucy Bronze. Eleven, Viviana Miedema. Twelve, Christina Endler. Thirteen, Alex Morgan. Fourteen, Salma Baca. Fifteen, Millie Bright. Sixteen, Asieta Schwala. Seventeenth, Marie Antoinette Cototo. Eighteenth, Trinity Rodman, who's obviously the youngest ever player nominated for the Ballon d'Or uh, of the Washington Spirit, so that's absolutely fantastic to see Trinity Rodman finish. Uh, as high up as she did for her first ever nomination so hopefully over the years to come she will continue to move down the list and get closer to a top 10 and maybe one day a Ballon d'Or win. 19th Fridolina Rolfo and 20th Kadia Datu Diani so some fantastic players uh, on this Ballon d'Or list and it will be really interesting to see who can go on and potentially knock off Alexia Pateas next season. First player to win the UEFA Women's Player of the Year and Ballon d'Or uh, award twice in a row. What a fantastic achievement that is for Pateas and her amazing career will continue to grow obviously hopefully she'll be back sooner rather than later from her ACL injury unlikely to be the remainder of 2022 early parts of 2023 I'd imagine maybe February March time uh, but yeah absolutely fantastic uh, to see uh, that Alexia Pateas has gone on to win her second Ballon d'Or and it's just um, for people maybe getting annoyed that Beth Mead didn't win it or um, Sam Kerr, you've got to think, yes, Beth Mead had a fantastic year for England, obviously winning the Golden Boot, Player of the Tournament, England Player of the Year. Um, sometimes it does come down to more goal contributions in a game and even uh, sometimes winning the trophies as well for some people that do vote the journalists. and. Obviously, you see what Pateas and that Barcelona team have done, not just in the Spanish league, but in uh, Europe as well over the last couple of years has been absolutely phenomenal. And that is why Pateas has gone on to win the uh, Ballon d'Or. Sam Kerr, again, like I said, fantastic year with Chelsea. But then you've got to think on an international stage as of now, Australia aren't really competing with the likes of the United States and England so that's why she's I'd say third in the list despite having a more successful year in terms of accolades wise uh, for club than Beth Mead but it's going to be really interesting to see um, what happens over the next 12 months before the next uh, Ballon d'Or takes place and obviously the big thing happening next year as well that could play a massive influence is uh, the World Cup taking place in Australia and in New Zealand obviously we will get to see all of these a lot of these players I think maybe not all of them um, at the World Cup next summer it's going to be fantastic to see and I really can't wait to see if anyone will be able to knock Pateas off her perch uh, and take home the coveted Ballon d'Or trophy. 
Right, we'll be back later on in this week to preview the Champions League uh, games that are on Wednesday and Thursday, and obviously we'll look ahead to the weekend games. There's also the World Cup draw itself taking place this weekend, and anything else. And obviously, if you missed our video earlier on Monday where we looked at the uh, action from this past weekend make sure you go check that out and that you are subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out anything more coming on this channel and help us grow to 500 subscribers by clicking that subscribe button and turn on the post notification bell and make sure you follow us on twitter and on instagram as well for all the latest news and stories as and when it happens in around the world of women's football and until next time we'll see you soon